done by ruthless Asian criminal gangs. Let's get it done. This is our In morning workout. It's birthday morning. I really want to do some bag training. But I got to do some gym work here. Body, so. Yeah, let's get this thing going. As they go in. suggested. This is a large-scale commercial grow with a street value around 1.3 million dollars. Of equal concern to the DEA is the potentially fatal way the criminals behind the grow have subverted the electrical supply. All right, see where that, that false wall is there? They rewire the house so it doesn't show up on the electrical meter. That there is hazardous which basically cause the house to catch on fire. And if you notice how close the houses are, you're going to probably take the whole block, especially with the winds there in Vegas. The only reason they do it is basically to hide the electricity and use of the lights to grow the marijuana. Okay, upstairs lock, plant can. You got high-powered lights up there that basically simulate sunlight. You notice on the house, the windows are blocked out. That's basically a block the grow lights from people out here seeing it because it basically would be like looking at a like a concert it would basically light up the whole the whole area 49 <laughs> suburban area pretty nice neighborhood but that's what they typically do they take a house where it's not going to stand out and then convert it into a grow and it's not suspicious the only thing suspicious he comes and goes once a day and nobody actually lives there this is rampant all over the Vegas Valley with all the vacant houses. I mean, like I said, they have an entire squad. Uh, it's dedicated to nothing but indoor grows in Vegas because it's, it's an epidemic. With the feds leading the fight against large-scale drug production, it's up to the Las Vegas Metro Police Department to crack down hard on the dealers. This corner apartment selling narcotics has been... Detectives from the dedicated gang unit are preparing to go on a night patrol in some of the city's worst hotspots for gang-related drug crime. <clears throat> yeah, well, this area is uh, known for its uh, high gang volume and uh, narcotics activity. Uh, narcotics activity and gangs usually go hand in hand. It's uh, usually how they fund their products and uh, create havoc in their area. We have uh, thousands and thousands of gang members documented here. You throw a rock in the neighborhood and somebody usually uh, either has drugs or has been selling drugs. The unit has pulled over a woman seen acting suspiciously. This is your car? This is my car. What kind of car is that? It's a BMW 760. What do you do for a living, if you don't mind me asking? Me? I work for a child care place. I work for a group home, actually. <laughs> they give pay pretty good money? Um, somewhat. Have you ever been in trouble before? Yes, sir. What have you been in trouble for? So high level trafficking. High level trafficking of what? Cocaine. Okay. Cocaine. Okay. <clears throat> we are constantly moving from point A to point B. But point B isn't just a dot. Okay. It's just warming you up now. Alright, next we're gonna do some more band work. Get the body going. I suggest high end cardio. High intensity cardio. Yeah. To really get your body going. You know, you really want to burn it's it up. Wrist pressure forward. Yeah, you really want to burn it up. Fast and hard. Fast forward to this thing. If you've been thinking about selling, now may be the right time. Every market versions. Trying to record this episode here. Briefcase. Here we go. Direct this right, Sorry about the interruption. Inventory. Clients. Middle management. Human resources. Hostile takeover. Season lies. Drugs Incorporated. Go inside the billion-dollar industry. Starting August 11th at 9 on National Channel.
Geographic. <laughs> Officers of Metro's Las Vegas Police Department have pulled over a woman seen acting suspiciously. What was the detail for that, if you don't mind me asking? I was at the wrong time, but now you're right now. Who was your boyfriend? Well, sit tight for a second, all right? They run further checks on her and her boyfriend, who they discover is a known gang member. The police now begin a thorough search of the car. Mm. Sometimes they uh, put traps in their vehicle. There'll be a special button that they can push that uh, will be under a secret compartment underneath their floorboards or underneath the mm -hmm. car and their hoods. Uh, criminals uh, that transport drugs very, get very creative when it comes to uh, trying to keep it uh, hidden from us. So far, no drugs have been found, but police will arrest her anyway. Because she has no insurance and a suspended driver's license. This will buy the police valuable time to impound her car for a closer inspection. In some cases, they can strip the car down until it's unusable. Uh, depending on where they hide the drugs or where the traps are, There are more than 300 gangs hustling drugs on the streets of Las Vegas. And one of them on the west side of town is the Playboy Bloods. I'm a hustler, you know what I'm saying? Selling hard, salt, weed, whatever. It's pretty much an addiction, you know, to the fast money and the lifestyle. This is, this is the job. I started this gang when I was like 13. Dropped out of school early. I just watch hustlers, you know, and I became one myself. I was infatuated with the lifestyle. Nice cars, clothes, women. You know, this is what I wanted to do. These cancers are very protective of their turf. <laughs> it's our territory. If you're from here, you know this is our territory. You know not to step on our toes. Rival gangs know that there will be deadly consequences if they stray into blood turf. We're still some going better. No, get him out the way. Shoot at him, knock him off, whatever it takes. Y'all ain't from the same neighborhood we're from, you gotta go. For the Playboy Bloods, pushing their product is a full-time occupation. My daily routine, I get up maybe 7 in the morning. I get my drugs. Um, I go to the area where I sell my drugs. And um, I pretty much stay there until I'm sold out. Pushing this. From the time I wake up to the time I go to sleep, 24 hours if I have to. For any tourists stumbling off the strip in search of a cheaper deal on the streets, they are in for a surprise. When they come on our side of town, now they don't know the prices. So uh, you can up the prices on them. We always gonna make double. For one, we don't want to deal with you, so we might as well charge you. JJ's been hustling for 20 years, but he's still got his sights set on bigger things. You got kids that want to grow up to be uh, football stars, basketball players. And in my lifestyle, I want to be the man. I want to be the big man. Life more comfortable at the top. Next year, I want to be higher than what I am today. It's pretty much my dream. It's 2 a.m. on the streets of West Las Vegas. Drug runners are winding things down for another night. <laughs> This means it's a time when large amounts of cash get moved around between dealers and their suppliers. Something the gang unit knows all too well. Routine car stops can often yield good results. As the detective leans in, he notices an open container of alcohol. A couple of hundred turns out to be just over a thousand dollars. This makes the detectives suspicious. And as they run their checks, they discover that this man has previous convictions for violence and drug dealing. He is also a known gang member. What kind of work you do? What kind of work? 
It's a lot of money to be carrying with you, man. For someone who doesn't have a job, how do you make all your money? Yeah. Gamble? Yeah. That's where we, what we gamble on today? Huh? I said, what did we gamble on today? Well, we play slots or? No, I wanted to grab seven on Texas last night. I gamble all the time. Oh, okay. Pretty successful? Somewhat. Yeah, we got soft as a uh, uh, well-documented gang member. He got narcotics priors. He had a large sum of currency on him. And uh, it's in smaller denominations, which is consistent with the street level narcotic sales. They think it's one of their key skirt arounds for them to say that they want some money gambling in Las Vegas. And usually, when people win uh, a jackpot or something like that, they'll be paid out in large bills. People that have uh, 20s, 10s, and 5s and stuff like that, that's not how jackpots are paid out. I uh, just kind of add a little more suspicion to what we think might be going on here. Both the detectives on the scene and now the canine unit search the man's car, but no drugs are found. With the suspicious cash haul, the police decide to take him in to investigate further. Your money, we are seizing it for this purposes now, just due to the fact that we believe that it's involved in a product transaction due to your prior history. That's what's going to happen today, sir. We're going to take the money and do some follow-up investigation on it, try to time into it a little bit more and go from there. For the officers of Metro's Las Vegas Police Department, the cat and mouse game with drug dealers, suppliers, and traffickers goes on. It's a battle with no end in sight. As long as tourists flock to Vegas, the demand for drugs will remain. With the VIP hosts, the call girls, the street dealers, and the cartel bosses, all the more happy to supply them in this high-stakes drug game. walking zombies is so devastating that even Puerto Rican crime lords are trying to ban it. Harry is bad, but I'm speaking worse. This film takes you inside the world of producers, traffickers, dealers, users, and cops who all make up the $350 billion a year industry that is Drugs, Inc. Hey, Dr. Juan Pinelli is a dentist, but today he's not fixing any teeth. Instead, he's got an appointment this with the victim body. of Jungle Rock. The big one will be seen. It made me sad and made me angry at the same time. The doctor runs a small charity called Amor Quesana that is dedicated to helping Puerto Rican homeless drug addicts. It's an overwhelming task, made harder by the unsanitary conditions of life on the streets. Okay, that's good. Wow. These kind of ulcers are formed when drug users inject outside the vein. Ooh. And then it starts making like an abscess. Many addicts use their ulcers to shoot up. It's easier for them to look at a good vein in the ocean. Creating a vicious circle that can result in amputation. It's frustrating, yes, because sometimes you know you can cure an ulcer and then you don't see that person in three months and when you see it again, it's without a leg or without a hand. And you know, he wants, he wants to the hospital and then in the hospital they just amputated. The majority of these ulcers can be healed easily with proper care. I want to get it fixed already. Got me sick already. I want 
see that no more. You feel, you know, you make a difference. For him, it's gonna be a whole lot better this night. Dr. Pinelli's charity has helped more than 10,000 families since it was formed in 1996. Uh, some, some nice <laughs> but on an island where one in seven people are drug users, it's just a drop in the ocean. <clears throat> Surrounded by so much suffering, Dr. Pinelli does what he can. I'm just trying so these people know that some of us care, we can help, and they're not alone. That's why I'm going to go. This homeless heroin addict was shot for working in a dope spot. He was uh, in his workplace dealing with, with drugs, selling and everything, and uh, the owner of the, the place was shooting. Couple of times, like 12. These kind of people, they don't like to be in the hospital because they, they need to use drugs continuously. Desperate to get high, he checked himself out before his treatment could be finished. And six years later, his wound is still not properly healed. He's alive. By, by, by but still, yeah. six years in the streets. This is this in a out of the belly. Uh, Puerto Rico's medical facilities are struggling to meet the demand caused by the wave of addiction on the island. We have maybe 13,000 beds in Puerto Rico for dealing with drugs. So we need to create at uh, least 50,000 more beds for drug use treatment. Mm -hmm. The doctor can help his wounds, but not his addiction. He's trying to go to get his sticks. And if, if you look right now, he's almost running to get his sticks. But that's how much they need it. Puerto Rico has twice the number of murders as New York, but only half the population. On average, there is a murder every eight hours, and 80% are drug-related. <laughs> Negrito worked as a major international drug trafficker for over a decade, but never got caught. <laughs> For those willing to risk bringing the drugs in, the profits are enormous. Hay una forma de hacer dinero, muchas formas de 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 entrar droga y por aire, esto por tierra, esto por por todos lados, esto para debajo del mar, por encima del mar. Puerto Rico is only a two-hour flight ride from the South American mainland. The source of 90% of the world's cocaine. Less heavily policed than the Mexican border, Puerto Rico is fast becoming the cartel's preferred route to the cities along America's east coast. Once inside this U.S. territory, there are no other customs from here to the U.S. mainland. The cartels pay the traffickers wow. for a share of the drugs. Now I got the weakest ones. This means that an estimated 20% of all the narcotics passing through Puerto Rico remain. There it is, on my birthday. October 8th. The result was Puerto Rico's own Lord. private 55, drug hell. It's a band. band. Change that. It's not I'll just be the right acts back. that are suffering. Another band. Those who work in the drug trade seldom make it out alive. No? I'm not sure we can keep it alive. We're going to pay for it. I think I'll Nadie se acuerda de ellos. Ya los que murieron, ya nadie se acuerda de ellos. Ya nadie visita las tumbas.
trafficker has killed or captured. There are dozens vying to take his place. Customs and Border Protection constantly play a cat and mouse game with these international drug smugglers who are intent on landing millions of dollars worth of cocaine on the island every single week. This $80 million haul was bound for the East Coast, places like New York and Boston, some of the largest cities in America. 80% of this 800 kilos would have been going to the uh, north-east uh, corridor. I predict that a lot more of these are going to happen pretty soon. Leading the fight against the smugglers is the CBP Air Enforcement Team. <laughs> and they've got the firepower to prove it. We're talking $26 million. So we, and it's brand new. They've just received two of the latest Black Hawk helicopters. We're going to do a west side patrol on the west coast of Puerto Rico, check out the beaches. With hardware like this, spirits are high. We're trying to do the back thing, we're trying to do the right thing. And we usually win. I'm going to get the other bands. The Blackhawk received an urgent signal. Back, there was a, uh, 